on today's show. Then I asked Jesus to come into my heart and to forgive me for all the wrong and the, the sins that I had committed. He healed every wound that I had. I felt accepted, I felt loved, and it made me feel complete. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. Thanks for joining us. On today's show, Peter was forced to wrestle with life's biggest questions after tragedy struck both he and his girlfriend. His search for answers led him to an unexpected encounter at a nightclub that changed his life forever. His story coming up. Lori, every one of us has those big questions. What are some of the big questions people wrestle with? Well, I think, you know, is there a God? Mm -hmm. If there is a God, why do people suffer? Why do bad things happen to good people, right? I think so. It, what's, think what's after this life, if anything? Yes. What's the meaning and purpose of my life? Could I go on and on? <laughs> I think so. I think right? you're doing really good. Yeah. And, uh, and, and most of all, um, after I die, yeah. where do I go? Where do I go? Yeah, is there anything beyond? These are important yeah. questions and, and ones that we need to take an honest look at, as even as Christians. Like, do we have an honest look at the Word of God and are we able to even address them for ourselves? You know, recently, uh, one that uh, really struck uh, uh, an incident was Kobe Bryant's death mm -hmm. and those that uh, passed yeah. on the plane with him and his yeah. daughter, Gianna. Yeah. And there were a lot of people uh, that heard that Kobe went to mass before and he was talking back and forth. And I remember even the priest said, uh, he said, I've never spoken to him before, but that day we caught each other's attention and shook hands, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think a lot of people are now asking that coronavirus, different things right, that are, right. are triggering, right. you know, the questions, what? what? Exactly, what and why, biggest yes. question ever. Also today, we'll continue our look at the Easter part story as part of our new devotional series this month. But first, this is how Peter was saved at a rave. It's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. <laughs> You know, believe it or not, I actually got saved in a nightclub. I actually gave my life to Christ in a nightclub. I know this might be a little bit hard for some of you to imagine, but I actually used to be a rave DJ, and I, I'd go into all these different um, nightclubs with my two little turntables and my crate of records. I mean, I loved this. I loved this stuff. And, you know, as you'd imagine, if that's, you know, what I'm doing, I was hanging out with all sorts of crazy people that were in all sorts of crazy lifestyles. And, and so naturally, as you imagine, I ended up getting caught up in a lot of the same messed up stuff as a lot of these people that were just out there just trying to experience life. And, I, you know, and of course, at the time, if you want to talk to me, I, I, you know, I thought I had been there, done that with Christianity. I had no interest in Christianity. Christianity was about dead rituals and about legalism and about oppression, right? Uh, but yet, gosh, in my heart, I knew there had to be more out there. You know, I think like a lot of people, I knew that there had to be a God somewhere. I just didn't know who or what that God was. At that season of my life, I, I went through a particularly bad spot. My, my girlfriend, at the time, who's now my wife, um, she actually walked in on her father uh, not too long after he had committed suicide with a gun. And also that same week, one of my, my, my other friends had died in a car accident. So, I mean, two funerals in the same week. I mean, uh, you know, as you imagine, as you'd imagine, like many people in that situation, you start asking deeper questions about life, you know. Is there a God? And what is the meaning of life? I just... I started spiraling into this depression because I knew I just couldn't fake life anymore. I, I, I had to start asking deeper questions because once you realize how fragile life is, it just, it, it confronts you with the brutal facts. What is the meaning of life? I remember one night I was, I was actually working at a nightclub and I'm just depressed out of my mind. And, and I don't know what it was, but I just, you know, I was in the, the second floor of the DJ booth just looking down on everyone. And of course, everybody was drunk. Everyone was stoned out of their minds. And I remember thinking, man, this is so stupid. What are we doing 
doing here? I mean, everyone here is just as clueless and as empty as I am. I just, I, I, I don't know. I was, I was just so overwhelmed by the fact that we're all, we're all just distracting ourselves with drugs or with relationships with the opposite sex. And I kept thinking, there's got to be more than this. There was this moment where I was totally overwhelmed, and I, I just, I don't know if you've ever felt like that before. But suddenly the thought actually occurred to me, ask God to reveal himself. Somebody had challenged me to do that before, and I thought, that's the weirdest, spookiest thing I've ever heard. But I don't know, there was something about that moment where I thought, you know what, I have to do this. Ask God to reveal himself. And so right there in the DJ booth, I had my turntables spinning right in front of me. I, I prayed one of the most bizarre prayers that I think I had ever prayed in my life. I, I literally prayed this. I'm like, God, whoever you are, whatever you are, if you created the universe, then you should be powerful enough to show me what religion is the right religion. I mean, you know, show me a sign, lightning bolts across the sky, Islam, Buddhism, none of the above. You know what I'm saying? I just thought, hey, come on, if, if this God is that powerful, he should be able to do that. And, and so I prayed this heartfelt prayer and, you know, kind of like, uh, have you ever snapped out of a daydream before? I, I remember having this moment where I thought, what am I doing? I, I'm praying. And I thought, man, do I need a cigarette? And so <laughs> I, I threw on a dance mix uh, to go have a smoke break. And, and so I, I, I was walking out of the DJ booth, went from the second floor to the first floor. And, and literally only about 30 seconds after I had prayed this prayer in the DJ booth, a, a total stranger walked up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder and he basically said, uh, he's, he basically said, dude, I know this is totally strange, but but Jesus wants you to follow him. And I'm like, uh, what did you just say? I mean, I'm, I'm freaking out at this point. And, and then I think I grabbed the guy. I, I had no, uh, I probably was completely intimidating to him. And he finally repeated it, except this time a little bit more awkwardly, Jesus wants you to follow him. And I, I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? And he, of course, the next couple minutes, he gave me the most awkward gospel presentation you've ever heard. You know, we're separated by, from God with sin. And, you know, I was so shocked. I mean, talk about a surreal moment. I kept thinking, is this really happening? I just prayed this prayer, and all of a sudden, you showed up in this nightclub to tell me Jesus wants you to follow him. I, the words, it was almost like they leapt out of my mouth. I was like, tell me, what am I supposed to do? And when I said that, I think he was caught off guard for a second. Like, uh, are you mocking me? Like, you know, he's thinking this, it shouldn't be this easy, right? But I was ready. I mean, he had no idea that he was an answer to a prayer that I just prayed. And so, you know, he's a little bit stunned. And he's like, really? What, if, you know, and I'm like, tell me what I'm supposed to do. And so he's like, uh, I guess we could pray. And so uh, I'm like, okay, let's do it. And so <laughs> he, he pulled me into a, a nearby booth and he was like, uh, grab my hands. And, and right there in the nightclub, I, I repeated after him this classic old school sinner's repentance prayer. And, and frankly, that was it. I, I immediately got plugged into a church the very next morning, and that was it. I, I think I freaked out all my friends and family. Oh, my word, Pete's gone for Jesus. What's up? There's nobody that is beyond the grace of God. And I think that everybody has that loved one, that God, can you reach that, that family member? And I'll, I'll tell you, if God can come to my nightclub, I'll tell you what, God can redeem anyone. I just love this story, Brian. I mean, Jesus was in the club that night. Yes, he was. And it just proves that we can be an answer to someone's prayer. You're absolutely right. We don't right. even know what's happened, right? Well, you know, it, it, it's funny. I started <laughs> laughing because when I saw this testimony, uh, I remember when uh, I first came into uh, Canada and my wife, I was going out, it was the first time, and a woman told me, she said, baby, it's not good to be alone. I said, I just want my career. I just want to focus on my career. She said, go out and meet people. And uh, I met my wife 
but I didn't didn't know it was my wife at okay, the time. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it was the first time I went out. She yeah. was going to a, a banquet, wow. and then, you know, I was yeah. coming there, and we just converged. So Amazing. good things can come yes. out of those yes. moments, right? We don't know what prayers have been prayed, be prayed before oh, we show up in the room. Which, which is my segue, because there was a person that was there. He's praying that prayer, yeah. and then all of a sudden, out of his DJ booth, he hears this guy just he's, he's the answer to the prayer. You know what? I just think this reminds me and probably you that the harvest is ripe. In yes. fact, Jesus said that. He said, the harvest is ready for you now. now. You don't have to wait. Somebody has prayed that prayer and you're that answer to the prayer. So yes. I would just say, wherever you are, you know, maybe in a club, maybe in the grocery store, maybe, you know, just taking a walk. Pay attention and be ready with an answer for your faith because you could be the one to lead someone to Jesus today. Yeah, and you know what, Lori, on the other side of that as well, uh, you're also the person that's probably uh, in that question, just like the DJ, he says, uh, I cried out to God, God, I need an answer from you. It says in Jeremiah 33 and three, cry out to me and I will answer. You cried out. We, I believe, are the answer. and We've got something to put into your hands, a new day. If you're at that place and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, today I want to pray a prayer with you. And I want you to know, after you call this number on the screen, it's not just a, a number where we're going to ask a whole lot of stuff. We're going to lead you in a place that it's going to help you. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I surrender. I've asked, now I hear, and I will obey. Make me the person you want me to be, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, it's Jesus said, I've come to give you life, life and to give it to the full. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, Jesus is coming after you. Yeah. Up next, see how an emergency room prayer not only saved Shay's life, but gave her a new one. It's really good. Yeah. I remember the first night I went to the club to dance, it was funny to me that they gave us an application. I was like, what are the prerequisites for being a stripper? Like, what do you, what do you need to do? When Shay Nielsen stepped onto the strip club stage, she had come a long way from the sheltered life she knew as a young girl. I was raised by my mom and my stepfather. My grandfather was a pastor all of my childhood. Growing up with a grandpa that was a pastor set the tone in my family for peace and for for love and accountability. She was always known as the quiet good girl, but when she started a new school in her late teens, she was drawn in by the lifestyles of gangbangers and drug dealers. Sell drugs and package drugs. Ooh, I felt like a bad girl. It felt good, you know, I kind of liked the feeling of not being the obedient child and not doing what I have to do all the time. When she finished school and moved out, she was ready to embrace a life with no restrictions. During the day, she worked as a body piercer. At night, she was drinking, partying, and popping ecstasy pills. Drugs helped me to open up. I was always a shy person, always reserved, always kind of insecure, always felt a little unworthy. So drugs made me feel like I can, you know? They made me feel like superwoman. Her addiction caused her to miss work often, and eventually she was fired. A friend told her she could make good money stripping. The light turns on and I'm ready to go. Even going in was like, now yet a different part of my mind had opened and a different part of the world that I had never experienced. And I talked to the lady and I'm like, how much money do they make? And she tells me and I'm like, oh yes, I can do this. About three to $400 a night. But stripping wasn't as glamorous as she expected. To get on the stage, but naked in front of complete strangers, it takes you to a place of you feel devalued. I couldn't be sober because it, I could hear the voice in my head saying, what are you doing? You know, you're worth so much more than this. So I asked one of the girls, you know, like, what should I, what should I do to kind of make myself not so shy to get on the stage? 
She's like, try, try cocaine. So once cocaine came into the play, it's like cocaine all night, sleep all day. Get up, do it again. At 22, Shay got pregnant. The thought of having a child gave her hope. So she quit using drugs, drinking, and dancing. But 34 weeks into her pregnancy, she lost the baby and sank into depression. To numb the pain, she binged on cocaine for three days with friends. I remember thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna die. My mom and my sister, they're gonna come find me and all they're gonna remember me by is a stripper that was on drugs. She drove herself to the emergency room to get help. I didn't wanna die, so I called on the only person that I know who could save me. God, if you are real, and that was my prayer, if you are real, and if you are there, and if you are listening, if you keep me alive, don't let me die, I will never touch cocaine again. And that was my promise that I kept my word. The grace of God allowed me to walk out of that hospital. Sobered up, Shay had time to think about her life. I've been a stripper. I've been on drugs. I've been a party girl. I've been involved in some of the wildest sexual escapades you can imagine. What am I gonna do now? And I heard and I felt this small, still voice inside of me saying, go to church. And I'm like, I guess I can go to church. She says every sermon felt like a personal message from God to her, so she kept going. And then one Sunday he preached a sermon where he said, you know, we need to pray and we need to ask God to reveal our own hearts to ourselves. And I prayed that prayer, God reveal my heart, reveal me to me, show me who I am. Everything that I had done in my life, the mirror was turned on me and I can see it through the outside of God and it hurt me. Then I asked Jesus to come into my heart and to forgive me for all the wrong and the the sins that I had committed. He healed every wound that I had. I felt accepted, I felt loved, and it made me feel complete. Shay is still drug free. Today, she's married to Coulter and raising their two daughters. She's also a writer. She shares her story in her book called, My Mess Became My Message. I look in the mirror and I see somebody who is redeemed. You know, I see, Shay, who Jesus loves. I see Shay, the wife. I see Shay, the mother. I don't see every, all the remnants of my past are dead. And Jesus came and he turned my life totally around from the inside out. There is hope for us all. God is right here. He's waiting to give us his love to come in and show us. All we have to do is be serious and say, Jesus, show me who you are. Now, God is a good God, and he writes the best stories. In fact, I love what she said, like God turns our mess into our message. Uh, I've said that myself. I'm telling you the truth, that my mess in my life, the struggle that we went through in, in our family and with our kids and, and you know even the messes that I've made my own, God has turned them into my message. What is the message that God is writing in your life? You know, I find that it's a struggle for the pen. We want to write our own story. We want to make it, you know, make us look good, make us sound better than we are. But when we turn the pen over to God and we say, okay, God, you write my story. I Tell me who I really am. And that's what Shay did. She said, show me who I really am. And when she saw herself the way God saw her, it broke her heart. And you know, it broke her heart not only because of the sin in her life, but also because she was overwhelmed by the love of God. It doesn't matter the mess that you've made in your life. If you give God the pen, he's gonna turn your mess into a message. He's gonna write a great story. It says in Psalm 103, three to five, he forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. He redeems our life from the pit and he crowns us with love and compassion who satisfies our desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I like that promise. God, no matter your age and stage, will renew your life. And if you're willing to say today that I want to turn my life over to you, I have a great resource for you called A New Day. And it is a new day for you when you say, I'm going to let you write my story. Turn my mess into a message. Say, God, I give you my mess. I give you myself. Thank you that you forgive my sin. Thank you that you love me. I'm letting you write my story. I'm letting you take charge. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you pray that prayer? Give us a call, 1-855-759-0700. We want to encourage you and love on you.
We'll be right back with more of our devotional series finished as we continue unpacking the Easter story. Your life needs a direction, a blueprint for success. In his book, 10 Laws for Success, Pat Robertson draws from a wellspring of wisdom acquired from a life rooted in God's Word. Discover how to bring your family economic success, build unity to achieve your goals, and grow in perseverance to reap its rewards. Get Pat Robertson's latest book, 10 Laws for Success, and start winning today. Welcome. Today, I want to talk to you about Palm Sunday. Behold the Lamb. You know, Luke 19, 38, it says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. You know, it's been said that hide in sight is always 2020. Yet, while we are in a particular situation or season, we tend to make things out to be what they aren't and often infer wrong meanings, only to kick ourselves thinking, if only I had known then what I know now. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem must have been one of those moments for his disciples. It had appeared to be such a wonderful day for them, and it was, but for different reasons altogether than they realized. They thought the Messiah had come to reestablish Israel's power in the world, but God had something entirely different in mind. Jesus entering Jerusalem at this special time of Passover, when the Jewish people were celebrating their deliverance from slavery in Egypt, is hugely important to commemorate when the 10 terrible plagues had fallen on Egypt before they were allowed to leave, the last being the death of all the firstborn animal and men. Now, God made special provisions to save his people and to protect them, and he commanded Israel in Exodus 12 to kill a spotless lamb and sprinkle the blood on the door frames and the lintel of their home and to stay in the house where the blood was applied. Now, the blood on the doorpost, on the door frame and the lintel formed a word in the Hebrew alphabet, chai, meaning alive or living. The big hope truth. The Lord did not check who was inside the house and who was worthy inside the house. He simply checked for the blood on the doorpost. Wherever the death angel saw the blood, he would not enter. But wherever the blood was absent, nothing could keep him out. Palm Sunday shouts, none of us are worthy, but thank God for the blood. Just as the Passover lamb gave the Israelites the chance for a new beginning, so our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, gives us the chance for a new beginning. The Jewish people declare, and this is Psalms 118 and 6, and this is the Tree of Life version. Listen to this. Baruch Habar Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Adonai. We bless you from the house of Adonai. Jesus Christ is our Adonai, our Lord, and has fully and completely fulfilled the requirements of the Passover lamb. What a friend we have in Jesus. The Big Hope Challenge, during this time of Easter, reflect on a time when you realized that God was different than you imagined and saw, and his will unfolded in surprising ways in your life. Share it with us on Instagram and on Facebook, and let's celebrate together and remember Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And that's your hope to go. <laughs> You know, as we think about how God can redeem anything and anyone, he is able to take our mess and our mistakes and our... Make it our message. Yes. And, you know, 
even more than a message, he can make it into his masterpiece. Absolutely. You're right. There's a lot of M's in there, but There's I agree a, with every one of them. Right? It's so true, Brian. Like, nobody is too far, too lost, too, you know, broken for God. In right. fact, he loves putting together the broken pieces of our life. He does. He's the master. You know what I've learned over time? That uh, even through the, the cracks and the broken areas, that's what really gives the, uh, the value to it. Mm. Yeah. That's what gives it the character. Yeah, yeah you know? it's like the light of God actually shines, shines through, through our the cracks. brokenness. I know it's true, and, and a lot of what we teach day to day on this show and in our teaching segments as well as our stories is that you can have hope and courage in your life. Yes. And I'm so excited about this new, this new book called Hope and Courage. Imagine that. 30-day devotional. It's actually a collection of Brian and myself, our yes. teaching from 700 Club Canada, and they've done that? a beautiful job of a collection of 30 days of reading. I made space for you to reflect. I love this, Brian, because I love to journal. Yes. I love to reflect. It guides you through your reading. Well, it does, so. and uh, it has some, some challenges, some action points, and it has a, a number of neat little uh, things that I'm not telling you all about because yeah. you've got to get your own copy. That's right. There's some great topics in here. Pick one. Yes, all right. Mm, number 20. All right, what is it? God allows us choices. Mm. Good, good topic of the day. We'll, we'll read out the topics as we go, but if you have not uh, even, you know, ever given a gift, maybe you've enjoyed the uh, program, you can have this book, Hope and Courage, for your best gift. You just need to call us at one 855 700 and you ask the Lord, what's the best gift I can give to 700 Club Canada? It would so encourage us, and we'll send you our book, Hope and Courage. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, make sure that you, uh, you follow along because through this 30-day devotional, you're going to find it's going to be a great companion from, for whatever you're reading, yeah, and uh, good. God's going to do something. Why don't we pray for hope and courage across our nation, Brian? Father, your word says hope is an anchor, and the righteous shall be as bold as lions. Lord, we do need courage in this hour. We're asking you, especially at this time as we prepare for Easter, for your amazing grace to flood this nation, but also our viewers. Lord, while well on others thou art calling, please meet them. Lord, bless them and their families. Bless them in their endeavors, their dreams, and their hopes. And Lord, give them courage to carry it through in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Go with hope and lots of courage. We love you. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada. They also started a ministry that reaches out to the gay and lesbian community with a message of love and hope that comes through Jesus Christ. I've had numerous partners who I've buried in the ground and friends who've died from HIV AIDS. It's a miracle I was never infected. But I'll tell you, what God has done in my life, I thank God every day uh, for my wife and for my children. He has taken my story, which was a nightmare, and my reality today is sometimes I feel like I'm living a fairy tale.